Alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salam wa rasulillah. All praise due to Allah and may Allah's peace and blessings be on the last messenger of Allah. Welcome dear viewers to another in our series, In the Names of Allah. In this series, we are looking at the names of Allah, the names which Allah revealed for us to understand Him and for us to be able to worship Him with clarity. These names have relevance not only to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala himself, Allah the Almighty, but they also have relevance to us as individuals in terms of how they should be reflected in our lives. We worship Allah through them, with them, and our lives should reflect them where there is relevance in uh, in, our, in, in, in the names themselves where there's relevance in the sense that we could possibly apply them. We looked at the greatest name of Allah already, Allah. We said there is no relevance in terms of us applying. There is nothing. We cannot be Allah. We cannot imitate Allah. So there's no place for that. Allah, that name which encompasses all of the attributes, is something inappropriate for us as human beings. Whereas Ar-Rahman and Ar-Rahim, which are the second, the second and third attributes which we're looking at in, in this segment, we began to look at in the previous segment, it does have an element which is relevant to us and we are going to be looking at it. But we will continue from where we left in our previous episode, which had to do with the vastness of Allah's mercy. And we spoke about what Allah said concerning His mercy covering everything and the Prophet Sallallahu talking about how you know Allah created the mercy in a hundred parts uh, one part is sent into this world 99 is saved for the believers on the day of judgment and that one part is so comprehensive that it stops the wild animal from devouring its own child or from trampling its own offspring we raised the question at the end of the last segment. If Allah's mercy is so great, and as the Prophet, may God's peace and blessing be upon him, said, that he wrote in a book on himself, obliging himself, that his mercy would precede his anger. If that is the case, then why will some people remain in hell forever? Where is Allah's mercy there? We said that Allah's mercy actually even includes people of hell. And we mentioned the hadith uh, of intercession which, uh, Prophet Muhammad, in which Prophet Muhammad had said, and this is found in Sahih Muslim, he had said that uh, Allah will himself intercede after all of the intercession has taken place by his permission, intercession of the angels, intercession of the, pos the messengers, intercession of the believers. I guess there will be intercession also of the Quran and you know, a variety of other uh, elements of Allah's creation where he has permitted them to intercede as an honor on that day. Then after all of the intercession is completed and the only thing left, as, as he said, was the most merciful of the merciful, then he will take a handful out of hell. And from them, he will take some people who had never done any good. They'd never done any good. And he would throw them 
into a river known as the river of life. And they would sprout. It's on the outskirts of paradise. They would sprout, grow the way that seed grows in silt, and they would enter paradise. But these people will be among the believers. Those who had expressed sincere belief in Allah. That belief might have been weak and had not uh, permitted them to uh, do a lot of good deeds, etc., etc. In fact, they were without deeds, external deeds, but obviously they had that basic internal deed of the heart, and that is of belief. They would be extracted. So what of the others? Those who didn't believe. Why doesn't Allah take them out also? Well, the question that we have to consider here is that Allah's mercy is also tempered by His justice. Though it precedes His anger, it is tempered by His justice. Because if the reward for belief and disbelief were the same, because if we're saying in the end, the people, everybody's coming out of hell. So everybody's going into paradise. Whether you believed or you didn't believe, the same. Whether you rebelled against Allah or whether you were obedient to Him, all the same. So then where is the justice? That would be unfair. People in this world had submitted themselves and really there's no reward for that submission because in the end they're going to hell as the disbelievers are also going to be had to hell. The rebellious disbelievers. So what we're saying here is that when we speak of the mercy of Allah, we have to look at it within the context of His justice. And His justice is so much so that uh, His justice is so much so that Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu own father ends up in hell. Not because Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi knew him because he died before he was born. The fact of the matter is, when a man came to the Prophet Sallallahu and asked him about his own father, and the Prophet Sallallahu told the man that his father was in hell, and the man was upset, the Prophet Sallallahu told him at the same time that his own father is with him in hell. This is in Sahih Muslim. And it was put under the title of a chapter in which he wrote, He who died in a state of disbelief will be in the fire. Intercession will be of no avail to him and the relationship of his favorites would not benefit him. That's the reality. Imam Muslim mentioned this hadith after about the father of the Prophet. Then he also mentioned another hadith in which Aisha related to the Prophet ﷺ after the verse and warn your next of kin, in Surah Shura was revealed, the Prophet ﷺ went and stood on Mount Safa and announced, O Fatima, daughter of Muhammad, O Sophia, daughter of Abdul Muttalib, O sons of Abdul Muttalib, that's his grandfather, I have nothing that can avail you against Allah in the Day of Judgment. However, you may ask me what you want of my worldly belongings. In this world, you can ask me whatever you want. But on that day, there is nothing that I can do for you. So, if Prophet Muhammad is uh, in that situation where he can't even help his own father, we know his uncle, Abu Talib, on his deathbed, Prophet Muhammad وسلم, asked him to accept the one God, Allah, but Abu Talib, due to his pride in his ancestry and his tribe and their customs, he was egged on by his own brothers, uh, telling him, are you going to disgrace the tribe? Are you going to disgrace our family, etc.? And so he died in a state of disbelief. And as a result, Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu said that for the good that he did, Allah gave him the least punishment of the people of the hellfire. But still, he would be in shoes from the hellfire. 
which would cause his brains to boil. So much so that he would think that he is receiving the most severe punishment of anyone in the hellfire. That's his own uncle. There was another case where an individual by the name of Ibn Jud'an, who was known for his generosity. He was an extremely generous person. And Aisha asked about him whether the good that he did would be of any benefit for him in the life to come. And the Prophet ﷺ said, it would be of no avail to him, as he never once said, O oh my Lord, pardon my sins on the day of resurrection. He never turned to God. He was generous, but it was generosity out of pride. He had means. Allah had granted him means. There's a story about where he got his wealth from, etc., Allah had granted him means and he shared it with the people and he was proud to do it and people praised him. And... But it wasn't connected with faith. And because of that, it would be of no benefit for him in the life to come. So, though we're talking about the vastness of Allah's mercy and we talked about how it covers every aspect of his creation, at the same time, the principle of justice also reigns. The principle of justice, fairness in Allah's judgment also reigns. But continuing on to look at the vastness of Allah's mercy. The Prophet ﷺ described him on one occasion, described Allah on one occasion, when a group came to him of prisoners of war. And among this group of prisoners of war, there was a woman uh, who was searching among the prisoners of war for her child. When she found the child, she immediately put the child on her breast and suckled it. The Prophet ﷺ and the companions, they observed this. And then the Prophet ﷺ said to, him, to them, Do you think this woman would ever allow her child to be thrown in the fire? They saw how concerned she was about finding the child. And they said, By Allah, so far as it lies in her power, she would never throw her child into the fire. The Prophet ﷺ said, Allah is kinder to his servants than this woman is to her child. Allah is kinder to his servants than this woman is to her child. With that, dear viewers, we're going to take a break and we'll be coming back to you uh, with this same thought after the break. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. When you are weak and the road seems long, remember, just remember, seek strength from the strong. Tech Talk. To look how to create a website and which Islamic websites to actually visit. What inspired you to create your own website? One of the challenges mm. that we, we, we face every day, the site or the, the application should be accessible worldwide. I remember uh, when I was younger, um, uh, one of my friends uh, asked me to, to convince his father to, to get him a, a desktop, even, even the laptop. Uh, when, you, when you come, if you compare both of them in terms of uh, cost, uh, laptop roughly um, cost twice the money if you, if you, if you compared with the desktop. Hackers, the word hackers, most of uh, the young the youth people are very interesting about that word. They say, hey, I'd like to be a hacker. Because there is a type of hacker, great, doing great job. We call them uh, white hat hacker. Alhamdulillah, salatu wa salam wa rasulillah. All praise is due to Allah and may Allah's peace and blessings be on the last messenger of Allah. Welcome dear viewers back from the break to this segment of our program, 
in the names of Allah. And we are looking or continuing to look at the vastness of Allah's mercy. Prior to the break, we talked about a, a, a metaphor or a, an example which the Prophet ﷺ gave to the companions of Allah's compassion and mercy on his creatures. As a woman would hate to throw her child into destruction, a woman who loves her child would hate to do that. The Prophet ﷺ said, Allah is more kind, is kinder to his servants than even the, such a woman. Among the vast elements of Allah's mercy is that he erases sins easily. Instead of sins sticking to us, you know, one sin for one good deed, uh, you know, an arrangement like that would put us in such a point of weakness that very few of us would ever escape the hellfire. However, Allah is merciful. So what he has done is he has allowed sins to be removed with a variety of uh, practices, whether it is repentance, and we look at repentance some more, or whether it is other good deeds. In particular, I'll mention one which the Prophet ﷺ had said, uh, as related by Abu Huraira, one of his companions. He said that whoever says, Subhanallah wa bihamdi, 100 times in a day, his sins will be removed from him even if they are like the foam on the ocean. Anyone who says, Subhanallah wa bihamdi, that is, glory be to Allah, and may he be praised. Such a person saying that 100 times will gain the removal of sins from himself, even if they're like the foam on the ocean. That is a great, great mercy from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And it's also part of knowing how do we worship Allah through his names. As we said before, it is not by taking a particular name and just repeating it. Rahman, Rahman, Rahman. Or Rahim, Rahim, Rahim. Or Allah, Allah, Allah. Repeating like that is of no value. It's meaningless. It has no meaning even if we did that with each other's names. We call out to somebody, Ahmed, 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 Ahmed. They would say, once, kifaya, once, enough, enough. One time is fine. Oh, you might repeat it, Ahmed, Ahmed, okay, you're trying to stress to the person, come here quickly or something is urgent, but just over and over and over and over again, hundreds of times, thousands of times, as some people do, believing that they're remembering Allah. No, that is not sane. It is not logical, it's not reasonable. And Islam is a logical and reasonable religion. It didn't bring that message. The message it brought was for us to remember Allah. Subhanallah wa bihamdi. Glory be to Allah and may he be praised. That we say that reflecting on it, then it will have that impact on us. Of course, it is sincerely it's not just parroting it, just repeating the words. Sometimes people repeat words of remembrance, which are filled with meaning, but they do it in such a way that uh, a person, it, it becomes a meaningless sound. For example, after the prayers, we're encouraged to say, Subhanallah, walhamdulillah, wallahu akbar, and repeat these 33 times each. However, when people do this commonly, unfortunately, you will see them or you will hear them doing it so fast that instead of saying subhanallah, what they're saying is spanla. 
Instead of saying Alhamdulillah, what they're saying is Hamla. Instead of saying Allahu Akbar, what they're saying is Lakbar. So they're saying Spanla, Hamla, Lakbar. What is this? This is not Subhanallah. It has a different meaning altogether. It has no meaning. Subhanallah, glory be to Allah has a meaning. And that's what we were enjoined to say. It's not the sound. And people do it, you see them doing it so quickly with their hands. It looks as if they have, you know, some of those diseases like Parkinson's where a person's hands are shaking. You know, I remember actually some people uh, accepted Islam and uh, had come with me to the masjid. And after the prayer, uh, people sat down, you know, they're remembering Allah. And they looked around, they saw these people, everybody's hands were like this, starting to shake like this. So they said, what is this? So I had to explain to them that they're supposed to be remembering Allah. But unfortunately, the way in which they're doing it, it's just a physical act. You know, they're trying to get over it as quickly as possible. That's why their hands are moving like this, you know, as if they've got no control over the, the muscles. You know, you've lost control of your muscles, so your hands are flipping like this. You know, it's very unfortunate. It's very common amongst Muslims, and it's a sad situation, but this is what it has come to. So when we have this statement of the Prophet wasallam, telling us to mention Allah's name a hundred times here, in this phrase, meaningful phrase, Subhanallah wa bihamdi, this means to do that with reflection, to take time to reflect on it, to think about it. The meaning of subhanallah. Wa bihamdi. And what does it mean to praise Allah? When a person does that reflecting, then it is going to have that impact on him. But when a person does it quickly, as we said, in a very nervous fashion, you know, just repeating sounds, then of course it has no impact, no benefit. Furthermore, Allah's mercy is so great that He rewards us for good thoughts, even if they're not followed up with good deeds. How, how merciful, how much more merciful could one get? Prophet Muhammad had said, Allah most great and glorious said, if my servant thinks to do a good deed, I will record it as a good deed as long as he doesn't do it. If he does it, I will record it as 10. Allahu Akbar. That is amazing. If Allah's servant thinks to do a good deed, but didn't do it for one reason or another, Allah records it as a good deed. And in other narrations, it mentioned that if a person thought to do evil and he didn't do it, that Allah would record it as one good deed. He thought to do an evil, but he stopped himself, didn't do it. Allah records that as one good deed. That is amazing. We are getting reward for deeds in the realm of thought. How much more merciful can one be? And this is the greatness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That His mercy reaches into our very thoughts. And you will find Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala referring to a variety of His blessings in this world as mercy. For example, the rain. We have a verse in Surah Al-A'raf, number 57, where Allah says there, وَهُوَ الَّذِي يُرْسِلُ الرِّيَاحَ بُشْرَى بَيْنَ يَدَيْ رَحْمَتِي It is He who sends the winds as heralds of His mercy. It is He who sends the winds as heralds of His mercy. What is that mercy? It is the rain. The winds come telling us of the rain to come after. 
he refers to the rain as his mercy. And, of course, the land, the crops, the, uh, the, uh, that whole cycle of production of food, provision of drink, etc., all of that is from the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We also find Allah referring to the scriptures which he sent as his mercy. He uses the term mercy to address it. We find in Surah Nahal, Allah is saying there, وَنَزَّلْنَا عَلَيْكَ الْكِتَابَ تِبْيَانًا لِكُلِّ شَيْءٍ وَهُدًا وَرَحْمَةً وَبُشْرَى لِلْمُؤْمِنِينَ I have revealed the scripture to you explaining everything as guidance, mercy, and glad tidings for the believers. So Allah called the scriptures mercy. Why? Because Allah had already in creating us given us a consciousness of himself. As we said in the earlier episode, when Allah created Adam, he took from Adam all of his descendants and he made them bear witness that he was their Lord, saying, Alastu bi rabbikum. And they said, Bala shahidna. He said, Am I not your Lord? And we all said, Indeed, we bear witness to it. So we all have a consciousness of Allah within us. And He has put in our souls an awareness of righteousness and, and evil, and corruption. Fa'alahamaha fujuraha wa taqwaha. As Allah said, each soul was given a consciousness of good and evil. So that was enough. But he didn't stop there. From his mercy, he sent books of revelation to clarify further for us the right and the wrong. So he called revelation his mercy. With that, dear viewers, we're going to stop. Uh, we're still looking at the great attributes of Allah's mercy. Ar-Rahman and Ar-Rahim. We'll continue in the coming episode and I hope that you will join us. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. When you are weak and the road seems long Remember, just remember, seek strength from the strong When life is a burden and everything is unstable Remember, just remember, Allah is the able. When nothing makes sense and you're heading for demise, remember, just remember, Allah is the wise. When the way is cloudy and there's no one by your side, remember, just remember, Allah is the only guide. When your heart is breaking and your pain makes you fall, Remember, just remember, Allah sees it all. When you are weak and the road seems long, Remember, just remember, seek strength from the strong. When life is a burden and everything is unstable, Remember, just remember, Allah is the able. When nothing makes sense, you're heading for demise remember just remember Allah is the wise when the way is cloudy and there's no one by your side remember just remember Allah is the only guide when your heart is breaking and your pain makes you fall remember just remember Allah sees it all